Francois Goob on the phone, founder of Oncrawl. Francois, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Uh, hi, guys. I wanted to try this, see if I got it right. I took French in college, so. Oh, no. Here, be, we, here be, we go. <laughs> Uh-oh. Bienvenue. 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 Au revoir. De la radio web, Francois. Bonjour à tous. <laughs> uh, All right, now you're going to have to walk me through what you said in response to Tom. <laughs> he said, welcome to, the, good afternoon, welcome to the show. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, yeah. So Francois is he's the founder of Oncrawl dot com. Which kind of explain what Oncrawl there is, Francois. Well, um, Oncrawl is um, our very first step um, in, in the uh, search industry business. Um, Oncrawl uh, is an uh, SEO crawler and a log analyzer uh, tailored for SEO. Um, so with our log analyzer, we can um, uh, track how bots behave on, on your website and uh, compare compare this uh, behavior uh, to uh, our crawl data, so that you, you get the, uh, an exhaustive view of uh, uh, how your website uh, works and uh, uh, if you have some factors that might uh, impact your your rankings. And it's part of a larger suite of services that you offer with uh, through Cognitive. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, Cognitive is, a, is the, the company behind behind uh, OnCall.com, and uh, we are a big data solution pro provider. And we we used to work with uh, major uh, European me media and um, and e-commerce vendors, and uh, so we we've got a, a lot of stuff uh, under our belt, um, such as a, a, a semantic uh, a price retrieving service or a, a, a classifier um, a classificator for for uh, web content stuff like that or entity detectors uh, with uh, some APIs. Um, so we, we've got a lot of things. That's great. Well, we know you're not located in the U.S., so where, <laughs> obviously, where in the world is Francois Goob? Well, uh, our uh, headquarters are located in uh, Bordeaux. Uh, I'm sure you've already uh, heard of this uh, town uh, because uh, we got the, one of the uh, best uh, wine in the world. Uh, are you so, implying um... that I drink alcohol, Francois? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you, you should taste uh, Bordeaux wines. <laughs> oh, they're fantastic! I was just kidding. So it's southwest of France, and we uh, we are about to uh, open some offices in, in the U.S. Uh, in the next few months. Oh, fantastic! Oh, cool. Where about? Uh, we 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 are um, uh, studying different options now, uh, but probably on the East Coast. Cool. Congratulations! Yeah, we've got space in Indianapolis if you're <laughs> if you're looking for a less expensive yeah. kind of rate, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Something to keep in mind. Just yeah. just throwing yeah, it yeah, out sure. there. Sure. I'm sure he'll add it to the list <laughs> <laughs> of places that he's not looking. Because nothing says international company like Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, reading your bio that I found online, look like you're involved in a bunch of different boards and everything. So, kind of a what's what's an average day for Francois? Um, uh, well, um, I'm, I split my day uh, between um, uh, raising my two kids and uh, uh, having some some fun at work. And and, and uh, at work, we are um, um, I, I'm trying to uh, um, um, uh, manage the the company and and work on the product. Uh, and um, uh, when I have some time, I, um, I used to 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 give back to uh, our ecosystem here in in France. Because it's not uh, as much developed than in in the U.S. regarding uh, startups and and how they are performing internationally. Right. So I'm I'm trying to give back in in as well as uh, in the uh, SEO community. Uh, I used to be uh, uh, um, the French ambassador for Majestic.com. Okay. Um, awesome. And so 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 we try to help the 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 SEO community here as well. So it's it's very it's a, a very fun day. Um, yeah, it's packed. Yeah. That's a lot. I I don't I don't know if I want to do any of those things, much less all of them at the same time. Especially the kids. <laughs> Forget that. Yeah. So uh, we kind of got a little bit of your back history, and we'll talk about your surfer history later. But how did you kind of get into the uh, the SEO industry? 
Well, um, back in uh, 2007, um, I, I started a company called uh, JobyJoba.com, uh, which was a, a search engine for, for jobs, uh, a, a kind of uh, Indeed.com uh, for Euro Europe. And um, our business model uh, imp implies uh, at the time to uh, uh, to get some traffic for free. So so we started um, uh, learning SEO um, uh, very very fast, and um, and so so I jumped in, in SEO at, at this time, and uh, we were doing like uh, uh, 10 million uniques uh, uh, a month. Uh, which is a uh, very very uh, uh, okay. um, very good traffic for Europe uh, in terms of SEO, and uh, so we used to uh, um, deal with uh, international issues um, and uh, duplicated content as well because we were uh, uh, retrieving uh, all the uh, jobs listings from uh, major major job job boards such such as uh, such as um, Monster or Career Builder. And so um, we, we we learned SEO uh, the the hard way because we were very borderline uh, gray hats. Uh, for, uh, <laughs> oh, SEO. it's the other. You even used the other color. <laughs> gray. gray. The gray hat. That's not one you hear too that often. Gray hat basically means I wasn't caught. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was. Right. I was in that gray area. <laughs> So uh, what's what's I guess I just thought of this. What's what, is Google the main search engine over there, or is it uh, what's what's the main search engine in France? Uh, it's Google. It's uh, more than uh, I think ninety three percent of the market. Wow. Uh, uh, so so it's very very huge. Um, the, n nobody talks uh, uh, about the uh, other uh, search engines. But the, the, there is one, um, you know, uh, in France, we, we, we don't do uh, uh, anything like others. So uh, th there have been uh, quite a few um, uh, startups who try to uh, make their own search engine. Um, one of them back in uh, uh, 2000 was uh, Exalid. And uh, now, uh, recently, we have a, a startup called uh, Quant. It's like a DuckDuckGo duck, duck, um, um, mm -hmm. Uh, for for Europe, and I think they are doing uh, quite well um, in entering the market, and I think it's um, a, a startup to follow uh, because they are they are uh, search rankings are search re uh, search results are very good. Uh, you know, dealing with uh, all languages we have in Europe, so th they are doing quite well. All right, we got a question here from uh, Caleb. He's one of our SEO techs back at uh, Site Strategics, and he says, "In SEO and digital marketing these days, big data is an exciting buzzword, but a lot of agencies and tool creators don't often provide any specifics on what it actually means. Why is big data important, and how are brands using it to um, use it to their advantage?" Well, um, that's a very good question. Uh, first, uh, yes, big data is a is a buzzword, um, and you know, uh, I think the the, the very big issue uh, we are trying to um, uh, to solve uh, using big data technologies is uh, accessing the data. We need a, a lot of accurate data to do our job uh, every day. Um, so using a crawler is using uh, 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 is using big data technologies. Uh, using uh, Majestic is uh, using big data technologies. So uh, I think there are people are uh, dreaming about uh, data science project. You know uh, how to predict. Um, uh, how my pages uh, will rank, or uh, uh, what? How can I uh, target some uh, uh, lookalike audience uh, um, uh, very fast using algorithms? So th th that's uh, all. Those dreams um, won't uh, be real uh, unless you are uh, aware of what you are doing. And uh, it's very hard to find people to uh, build the proper statistic uh, models to uh, uh, do some data science on our um, uh, data sets. So uh, I think um, that um, uh, people are dreaming now 
but uh, technologies are um, the, the cost of big data technologies is uh, uh, dropping down. So uh, with uh, stuff like uh, Elasticsearch, uh, Kibana, uh, you, you can build uh, your own um, uh, data store uh, for for just a few bucks uh, and some some skills uh, in computing. So I think we are just at the beginning of the of the story here, and I think uh, that if people are um, uh, managing to to access their data and to uh, enrich their data and to uh, clean their data, uh, they'll be able to to build some some cool stuff. But it will take time. So my 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 bet here is that uh, people need to uh, clean and enrich their data. You know, uh, um, a, a quick example here. Um, Google has um, released a knowledge graph back in 2010. And uh, nobody out there has built uh, an, a knowledge graph for their own website. Uh, you know, ma major um, uh, e-commerce vendors um, uh, don't don't even know um, uh, how much um, uh, how they are talking about the, the brands or the products they are selling, and uh, how they could um, uh, benefit from uh, a, a better knowledge of their uh, of their catalog. Uh, you know, they are just buying stuff and selling stuff, and and, and then they need to uh, get more uh, insights about uh, uh, their their own content, and uh, with all. Um, uh, entity detectors that are open source now, uh, they can build their, their own knowledge graph and provide a better uh, user experience and then a better uh, search engine experience because uh, when Google is trying to uh, interpret their website, uh, they are uh, interpreting uh, entities, for, in, for instance, uh, such as brands or products. So if they are um, able to uh, uh, highlight them in their content, they, they'll, they'll be better uh, and, uh, um, understood by, by, by Google, for instance. So uh, it's just the beginning, but they should start cleaning their data and enrich their, their own data now. Well, that was certainly a lot. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm sorry, well, yes. <laughs> well iterated and articulated there. Uh, I don't know if you uh, read Search Engine Lee and Francois, but there's an article posted this week um, um, by an author. I forget his name. I should have wrote it down. But I uh, pretty much called um, technical SEO. Uh, I compared it to makeup, saying, well, using makeup, right, can make you more attractive. Applying makeup doesn't always make you more attractive. At some point, you're done. You're made up. And more makeup will be futile. Do you agree or disagree with this? Well, um, it was kind of a, you know, it kind of made a lot of people mad because there are a lot, there are a lot of technical SEOs that I follow and that kind of rustled their feathers and I actually saw another article just literally before we uh, the interview started and kind of combating his point of view. So I just kind of cut your thoughts there on the importance of technical SEO in in, in, in a digital marketing strategy. Well, um, um, just a, a, a little story here. Uh, you know, back in 2007 or 8, um, it was all about uh, getting backlinks and getting uh, proper uh, anchor text. Uh, and on-site SEO was just um, like, uh, okay, put a, a, an, an H1 or and some H2 or 3 and you'll be good. And uh, um, more recently, with all major uh, uh, updates like Panda, uh, on-site uh, has, be, has become um, uh, the new hype. And uh, I think people are underestimating um, the power of uh, on-site uh, SEO. Um, SEOs uh, started uh, recently to do some research about um, the quality of uh, their content and how their uh, internal linking structure, for instance, can uh, influence not only the, 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 the way uh, uh, Google scores each page, but also the, uh, the, the bot's behavior uh, in terms of uh, crawl frequency, for instance. And um, I think that um, 
uh, technical SEO uh, is um, uh, a, a little baby now. Uh, we can do a lot uh, with technical SEO. So, so I think people are still underestimating uh, the power of uh, a better uh, uh, internal linking structure. Um, uh, they, they usually they don't even know um, uh, how deep Google is crawling the, their website, and so. Um, uh, I, I think that um, uh, I, I don't agree at all with uh, what was written in, in, in Search Engine Land. Uh, I think uh, uh, that people can uh, um, uh, uh, improve their, their, their own page uh, SEO uh, a lot. And it's not about uh, over-optimization. It's just uh, make Google happy, you know. Uh, make, make make them understand what what your your content is all about, and and make make them understand what are your uh, main pages, what are your money pages, what are the the, the pages that that that, that are uh, giving the, the best value to your users, and 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 people are are just trying to uh, put some silos in on the website and and just uh, 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 fulfilling uh, HN tags. And th that's not about this. It, that's about um, uh, giving a good user experience and about uh, uh, understanding uh, how bots are experiencing your, your website as well. So uh, people try to focus on uh, usage metrics such as uh, bounce rate, uh, but they don't. They, they didn't care about uh, bots uh, bounce rate, and, and they should because um, we saw customers of on call uh, getting uh, like uh, a forty percent raise uh, on uh, months over months uh, when they tackled su such problems. So uh, I think uh, uh, th there's a lot to do here. I feel like I feel like some of that argument that that happens in that industry is that you have you have kind of three layers of companies. You know, the first layer is nobody knows who they are, right? Mm -hmm. And so you've yeah. really got to optimize well because nobody's mentioning you online. Nobody's so you got to present your data really well to to be ranked. To, you know, not even ranked, but to be found. Mm -hmm. You know, in a certain. Then there's the second that everybody knows them, and so they don't really have to work that hard at SEO. Because everybody's always mentioning, and and they don't realize that if they just tweaked a little bit more, you know, they could get a little bit yeah. more. And yeah. then, and then the third, I think, which is the majority of companies, is both. You know, is that they're trying to get, you know, they're trying to do the PR, they're trying to get publicized, they're trying to write great content and get it found. And and so I think that's where a lot of those mm -hmm. arguments happen. Is I hear people from companies that, you know, they're like, well, we don't do much SEO. Well, yeah, you're a Fortune 100 company. Everybody's <laughs> writing about you every single week. Mm -hmm. You really don't have to. You're 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 going to get found for those relevant in terms just based off of your popularity. Right. Not everybody else has that. No. Well, yeah. and I think there's. I mean, when we get into technical SEO, a lot of people think, "All right, make sure your page descriptions are filled out. Make sure your titles are done. Make sure your header yeah. tags are all fixed. Make sure you have your internal linking structure. Make sure all you know." But there, after a while, I mean, there are so many other items and so many different elements that people don't know or think about. Not being the SEO nerds that the rest of us are, right. that they're like, "Oh, okay, well, we're done." You know, we're, we'll do yeah, it. We're for, we'll do it for sixty days, and we're done, right? Uh, we yeah. did everything that we were supposed to. We fixed all of our broken links, and we did all that stuff. But then, you know, getting into more and more as we get into the mobile environment, fixing page speed and making sure all of that stuff works properly. You know, pre-rendering um, the the AMP stuff from Google. All of these things start falling into the the technical SEO basket. But it's it seems like people don't even really give the SEOs credit for any of that stuff. They just say, "Hey, here are the seven things that you're going to do on our website." I'll I'll pay you for 30 days and then we're probably good right I, I just w want to add something here um, uh, it's not from me but uh, it's from uh, Fred, Fred Wilson from Union, Squ Union uh, Square Venture uh, uh, who's running the, the blog avc.com um, uh, so he's a, a huge investor in, in the US and uh, he used to say that uh, you need to, to, to get your SEO right uh, 
uh, if you don't, uh, then you are you are not doing your job. Uh, you, you can um, uh, do some crazy things on uh, social media or uh, having these uh, uh, pretty good affiliate program, for instance. But uh, I think your SEO right is uh, one of your basics. So uh, whatever the kind of company you are, uh, you, you need to uh, write a plan, an SEO plan, and you need to uh, to execute it, uh, no matter what, what's your business either it's local or, or international, you need to do it. So, um, uh, you, you know, uh, I think SEO is a, uh, the first layer uh, when you're starting a business. It's, this is the first layer you, you need to uh, uh, to set up for your um, uh, marketing plan. Uh, and so um, uh, people are always happy to do, to say that they, it's uh, uh, their community on Facebook that is driving their business. But uh, when you look at their, their their uh, analytics um, they, they used to to do some uh, to, to 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 get a, a set of their traffic from organic searches so uh, I, I think people are are shy about uh, sharing uh, um, their how they do SEO uh, that, that's uh, how I feel uh, from from Europe I, th- I think that's dead on you know I always tell people you know, you, you don't build a house on a faulty foundation, you know, mm-hmm. and, and so if you're writing all of this content on a on a foundational website that's not optimized for search engines and presentable to them, you're you're just wasting wasting time. A yeah. good percentage of your time. You kind of touched a little bit, but uh, how has uh, over the last the years you've been doing SEO, how has technical SEO kind of changed, evolved over the last ten years? You said you've been doing it, minus um, the gray part. <laughs> <laughs> We used to uh, we used to uh, work uh, uh, to, to do the work um, uh, like uh, 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 beginners like like uh, optimizing uh, uh, page by page. Uh, then we started to uh, uh, set up some rules uh, for writing titles, uh, uh, writing your HN tags. Uh, then we 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 become more aware about uh, structured data stuff like that. Uh, and uh, uh, now, um, as our uh, all websites are getting bigger, uh, we need we need some some tools to uh, get uh, uh, accurate data. And now, um, so uh, we we all use the uh, software like Screaming Frog, uh, stuff like that, or Xenu for uh, uh, for for crawl, crawling uh, our websites. But now we need to uh, look further to get uh, actionable data and get some uh, uh, more insights and and, more, and and actionable data visualiz- visualization, for instance. And um, only SaaS uh, software as a service uh, crawlers can can help you do that. And 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 as uh, crawling is a, a simple thing to understand, uh, a, a lot of people are uh, getting into that. Uh, but the the main thing here is that you need to compare your 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 own data, your qual data, to uh, other sources su- such as your um, analytics or your log- logs uh, to get uh, an exhaustive view. Um, if you want a, a 360 view, you need to uh, compare all uh, the data sets of your of your website. So uh, I feel like um, uh, people are. Are uh, growing up uh, on this topic, and and th- they are uh, uh, touching. This is a touching point. Um, uh, th- they are uh, starting to uh, compare their their data, their usage data, and their how they are ranking. Uh, they are comparing uh, how uh, if the number of words on a particular page is uh, uh, influencing uh, their their rankings, and they are uh, identifying patterns. Uh, to help them build their uh, editorial plan or their uh, uh, linking plan, and and so uh, I think we, um, you know, SEO is a, a, a young guy, so um, we are we are all growing and we are all learning, and and uh, uh, people are, are we, we we saw people doing some crazy stuff um, recently. Uh, uh, we found um, uh, this uh, this new service called. Uh, do you know SEO Observer? Do, do you know them? I haven't heard. Uh, of 
Uh, SE Observer is like uh, they are comparing uh, each version in uh, in archive.org. They are um, uh, grabbing some data from Majestic. They are um, uh, uh, grabbing all uh, search engine results page for a particular keywords, and and then they they can help you understand why uh, someone is uh, behind or um, or uh, on top of a uh, uh, search engine result page, and um, the, the the guy behind. Behind, behind the service is, is someone called Kevin Richard, and he is um, he, he, he he did a, a huge work uh, to uh, aggregate all sort of data to uh, help people take action uh, on, on their on their pages, and um, they are uh, they are very very. This is a very good service, and uh, I think uh, that uh, uh, people. Um, uh, will benefit from uh, such tools, and uh, uh, and then they they'll become uh, better at their uh, uh, daily SEO routine because of that. So uh, tools are, are making people aware, and people are learning learning from the tools. Then uh, uh, technical SEO had uh, some good days ahead. Yeah, in a blog, or I don't know if you wrote it, and somebody from um, Uncrawl did, but uh, had a nice blog article on Uncrawl about voice search. What kind, what, what kind of impact do you think voice search is having on um, the SEO industry? I'm not sure it's uh, about uh, voice search. Um, I think um, that th there'll be uh, uh, um, a big shift uh, depending on how we use our devices. Um, you, you know, uh, okay, uh, voice search is important, but if you are um, uh, using a voice search, voice search in your car, perhaps it's not Google that is uh, answering your, your your query. If you're using a, um, uh, an, an Apple device, uh, it, chances are uh, it will be a Siri uh, that will answer the, the question. And so um, I, I think it will uh, have a, an impact on the, the fragmentation uh, of the search market. You know, Google is a big player now uh, on the uh, uh, on the search, uh, but uh, in a few years, um, as uh, Siri is uh, uh, growing and as um, Alexa from Amazon is growing as well, um, I think that there'll be a, a sh shorter uh, part of uh, of, mar of the market for for guys like Google or Bing, depending on how they integrate into our devices. So um, I think we, we should look, um, we, we should keep an eye on uh, how hardware is evolving um, uh, before um, um, getting scared about uh, uh, voice search um, because th th there still be screens and, and, and keyboards. Voice is just another keyboard. Francois, you've been very generous with your time. We always like to end um, the interview with some with some fun questions that are not really... SEO or whatever <laughs> social media topic related. So um, in the pre-show questionnaire, um, you mentioned that you used to be a semi-pro surfer. <laughs> yeah, I want to hear yeah, yeah. all about but this. <laughs> I might want some lessons, and if you can hook me up with a spot somewhere over in France, that would be yeah, yeah, Since, yeah. Back in the nineties, uh, um, uh, I was grown up um, uh, near near uh, a beach uh, in in southwest of France, and so so I used to, to surf every day um, uh, when getting back from school. Um, and so uh, people saw that I was quite good, so uh, I, I was uh, getting endorsed uh, uh, by some brands and uh, uh, and do some uh, contests uh, uh, abroad. And um, uh, so it was quite fun, but uh, um, uh, I think it was a good option to uh, uh, to to surf the web uh, <laughs> a bit <laughs> than than surf some waves uh, because it's it, it, both uh, are fun, but. Uh, um, uh, you know, I'm getting older, so <laughs> it's, it's quite, quite hard to to pad it out when when it's called out there. So, so the word semi pro is is that like you were really good at surfing, but just not making any money yet. Yeah, it was. It, 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 it's not not enough money. <laughs> semi pro means not enough money. <laughs> it's almost like gray hat. 
<laughs> yeah. Pretty close. Pretty close to the same thing. <laughs> we were really good at what we did, but... <laughs> uh, so this, I promise, isn't meant to be stereotypical, but what is... I, when I was in France, I had the best crepes I've ever had in my life. So what's what's... What's your favorite crepe? I didn't know there were different varieties of crepes that you can have with like eggs and dessert ones and breakfast ones. So Great what's ones. what's Francois's go-to crepe? Brittany, uh, there's um, a recipe uh, called um, Cunyaman. Cunyaman is uh, made of uh, a lot of uh, uh, butter um, and uh, a lot of um, uh, sugar. Yeah. And then... Uh, Are you sure so, it's not American? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds so, very American. <laughs> if you add bacon to this, you were in New York. But but, but you know, uh, it's it's very uh, very tasty, very good, and uh, um, it's um, you, you we do it in France with uh, uh, what we call um, uh, salt butter. I don't know if you if you, you you get. Yeah, yeah, it's better with salt, and uh, so when, when you are um, when, when you are uh, uh, cooking um, uh, this butter with um, uh, with um, sugar, uh, it's uh, um, becoming uh, uh, caramel. Do you know caramel? Oh yes, okay. yes. Uh, so so it's a, a, a very very uh, fine uh, taste because it's between salt and between sugar. So it's very good, right. very good. Well, so the last thing that I want to know, I want some, I need some wine recommendations from you for being over in the uh, in Bordeaux. What's um, you know, not necessarily like a, a winery or anything like that, but is there a specific variety that you like or or a, a blend that you like a whole lot from over there that we could. Uh, take a look at maybe get a couple of hints we are very close uh, we are a, a 30, 30 minute uh, ride from from the ocean here and so we are um, eating a, a lot of oysters um, uh, here and uh, having um, uh, a little uh, glass of uh, uh, wine, uh, white wine, um, uh, with uh, uh, very cold, very cold uh, glass of white wines. Uh, eating oysters is uh, um, uh, one of the best things you you can do uh, in the world. Yeah, um, sure. On the beach so, in France, so you, you should, sound you should so try bad. this. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm in. So when uh, whenever you're free, um, just let us know if you have a room. Available. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, come, come see us, guys. Uh, we'll be happy to uh, uh, get you around here and uh, uh, showing you some uh, um, uh, great innovations and uh, uh, great food as well. That would be there awesome. I was there. Uh, I was there. A few, I wasn't in Bordeaux, but I was up in Paris and in Clichy with uh, Email Vision. So I was working with those those folks for a few years, and and uh, it was absolutely fantastic. We got to go over to, to France every quarter, and I, I mm. oh my god, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, I need another client there, so I'll give you a call, Francois. <laughs> okay, let, let's. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'll get you uh, uh, your client, and and so uh, you, you you'll be uh, running your your show uh, uh, in France. Uh, you got it. Sometime. Okay? Remote, yeah. You got it. Nate, <laughs> Nate can't make it past security, but the rest of us will be there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not, a, not again. Man, why you got to bring... I'm flying on tomorrow. Why you got to bring stuff like that up? <laughs> So Francois, thanks thanks so much for your time. And and, and then the and uh, the pre-show questionnaire. You said uh, there was a special discount code for our listeners. We can get two months free. Yeah, yeah. If you if you sign up with the code uh, Edge of the Web, you get uh, one 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 month free. And uh, as we are offering a thirty days free trial, you get uh, it's one plus one two months uh, for free. You, you you just have to type when you sign up Edge of the Web. You'll be good. Thanks a, a lot, guys, and um, passez une bonne journée. Yeah, yeah. That, thanks, thanks for joining us.